Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Today we're going to talk about the Phoenix Suns versus the Timberwolves. The Timberwolves had a very interesting game. They played lights out. We're going to discuss what I think the big question is for the Suns. I think there are two real big questions. One is Anthony Edwards. The other is Cat. Today we're going to talk about Anthony Edwards in particular and how the Suns guarded him and how they could potentially guard him in the future and or what the best way to handle it is. So let's go. So the first question is who is going to guard Anthony Edwards? And that was answered to begin with by Devin Booker. And so one of the big things we're going to talk about how is Anthony Edwards loves to shoot this little mid-range jumper. This mid-range jumper, he shoots with pretty high volume in general and shoots it with decent efficiency. It's not as efficient as a three-point shot or obviously close to the rim, but he shoots it with respectable efficiency. And so in the third quarter, there was a period of time where he made several in a row. So again, we can see this time Grayson Allen. Him. Again, the point is the Suns aren't putting their best defenders on him. They're choosing to have the best defenders on other players. And so he was able to get to this little mid-range pull-up with pretty good consistency. And there was a period of time where he hit like four in a row, five in a row, shot it with very high frequency. And so then after he made a couple of these, the Suns decided to make a change. So this was the one that finally broke the camel's back. So he makes this one, and you see instantly the Suns decide to call a timeout. There it is. And so after this timeout, the big thing is that Kevin Durant is now the one guarding him. And Kevin Durant is a long, very good defender, and Anthony Edwards makes another one. So the Suns further adjust, and this time down the court, when the ball screen happens, they're going to hard head. So 14 is going to pop out, essentially trying to make Anthony Edwards go back, and KD is going to follow him over the top to try and get re-back in his way. However, Anthony Edwards simply keeps shooting lights out, and the one thing is number 14 kind of acts, acts as a screen to Kevin, so Kevin can't actually get to Anthony Edwards. So this is probably something they haven't worked on a huge amount of the time, and that's why it isn't ideal right here, and Anthony Edwards ends up with a clean look at a three. And then one position later again, we can see KD on Anthony Edwards, and again, Anthony Edwards is able to create separation and wind up with a good shot. So then, as the end of the third quarter is happening, we can see the Suns go into the, essentially what their final stage of defense is going to be, and that is where they send a double early. So there's no ball screen happening. They just went essentially to double them right away, and then they were showing aggressive help. And one of the things that this led to is when you show aggressive help one way or the other, you're going to leave players that are on the perimeter open, and so that's the question for you, is that's a late closeout, a decent closeout, frankly, but it's still an open look for number nine. And the Suns kept with this strategy where they sent a double early, but we can see, like, this player is just roaming free, and so the Suns aren't really focused on what their rotation should be, or they haven't practiced this, they don't know what their rotation should be, and so Anthony Edwards puts, Anthony Edwards passes to Nas Reed, who's another good three-point shooter, as KD is also helping over. So KD takes one step over, Anthony Edwards makes a pass right there to Nas Reed, who shoots a three, and again, Nas Reed makes it, he's a good shooter. And so again, we see what happens, here comes the double, and there's, there's no rotation. They're simply leaving this player open for a wide open three. So then the question is, which of these defenses is going to be the ideal, and which one should the Suns stay with for the rest of the series, or at least for the next game? So the first one, we have the option of playing a lesser defender on him, helping and essentially let suddenly for a mid-range shot. The second one is KD. The third one is the hard hedge. And the fourth one is the double. Okay, so walking through it, the individual, if you had, let's say, Booker, or let's say, Grayson Alamon and showed help behind it, it led to mid-range jumpers. Okay, Anthony Edwards shoots mid-range jumpers somewhere, let's just ballpark it at 43%. It ranges based on where it is, but average 43%. With KD on him, he's going to shoot the same percentage, but he's going to shoot slightly worse just because of KD. And the hard hedge, if you practice it, you can probably lower your percentage a little bit, but he got relatively good open three-point shots. So I'm going to say about the same as with KD on him. And then finally, the double. So with the double, we saw easy passes to Nas Reed, and we saw easy passes to, to Alexander Walker. Nas Reed shoots the ball objectively, better from Anthony, better than Anthony Edwards on the perimeter, probably shooting easier shots by and large, but he shoots it with a higher percentage. And then Alexander Walker shoots the ball about the same, maybe slightly better, at 35%, 37%. Also, shout out to Luca Garza with the three. And so I think that leaves you with essentially two options. One, the first is to double, but when you double, you have to be able to figure out the rotations. You cannot leave open players, open good shooters on the perimeter just chilling there. You cannot do it. You got to have a plan. You got to be able to figure out your rotations. You got to practice that tomorrow so that way you have it and you make Anthony Edwards make more difficult passes. These one pass away open shots, no, you can't, you can't allow that as a defense. 
or two, you simply leave with Grayson Allen and Booker and you help below and you essentially live with that mid-range shot. Yes, at some point he's going to make four in a row. You have to be willing to accept that and essentially understand that in the long run he's going to miss some of them as well and say that you're going to outperform him on offense. Frankly, those are the only two options. Again, this cannot happen. Okay? I understand like it was a pass over here, but this is even more open. You cannot allow that. And so that is the big question I believe the Suns have to answer going into game two is how to defend Anthony Edwards. If you enjoyed this, feel free to like and subscribe. Have a blessed rest of your day.